So here in the field is our crop of conventional wheat. There's about 5 million acres of this grown across this country and it makes not only bread but also produces animal feed. What's interesting about this wheat is it's doubled the yield in my lifetime. This is a, a, an amazing yield giving crop. It's been the subject of plant breeding. It's had, uh, the, in this case, lots of fertilizer applied to it and pesticides to get this astonishing yield. Roughly about three and a half tons an acre. And um, that, that equates to about uh, two or three loaves of bread off a square meter. This is the grain that we've taken off just one square meter. It's astonishingly high yielding, isn't it? But in order to get that, we've had to put quite a lot of fertilizer on, which is not only expensive, but also, of course, has uh, connections with greenhouse gas emissions, which effectively are warming the planet. So the challenge for us agriculturally is how can we grow really good food and also balance that with our requirements to deliver, you know, not just planetary cooling, but also uh, biodiversity within, within the field. So in other words, you know, can the insects, the bugs, the birds and everything live in this field alongside us? Well, that's a big ask. So let's see whether there's some way we can go towards that. So here in Oxfordshire, and actually across the whole country, we used to grow this. This is a mixture of very traditional heritage wheats. And you can see this huge diversity within this crop not only of diversity within the wheat itself, which actually in this case is a population of many, many different types of wheat, but also in the base of the crop. Here we've sown clovers to fix nitrogen. There's also other species that are not sown, but are not causing economic damage to the crop. But look, there's a big question around this, and this is it. So from our square metre, this is the grain, the amount of grain that we've got, which is significantly less than the amount of grain that we got on our other crop. So this one may only yield half the amount of grain, but it does deliver in terms of biodiversity. There's lots of insects in here. You can hear the birds. It's all happening. And actually in terms of carbon footprint, this is also quite interesting because it's not receiving any nitrogen fertilizer uh, or pesticides. And that of course means it's cheap for farmers like me to grow it. So actually, this is an interesting crop but you can't get away from the yield penalty that we're facing. So we've spent about 150 pounds an acre on the conventional wheat crop, but of course on the heritage crop, it's, we spent nothing. So uh, even though we might get less yield, the crop is uh, still profitable because um, e we haven't spent money. So there's no risk or less risk for the farmer. So an important point to note about the traditional heritage population of wheat is that it's grown after pasture. And this is a herbal pasture which is ploughed in after four years of animal grazing. And the beauty of that is that the herbal pasture is not only providing fertility for this crop, so it doesn't need fertiliser, but also the fact that um, the crop should be mineral rich. So in other words, the food that we eat should be better for us. So that's a real plus in my mind. So, you know, solving problems at source is always the best way. You know, whether you're a farmer or an eater, I, I just, you know, just to me, it seems an interesting point to make. I mean, I just really like the idea of this crop. I just think it's a really interesting crop to be in. It's a really interesting crop to eat. You know, it, I know it's really tasty because we've baked with this uh, type of population mixture before and it, and it just works. Um, yeah, it's inconsistent and, and, you know, you've got variation within the crop. But actually, if you, if you think about it and, and, and don't let that be a problem, this is a really interesting crop because it delivers on so many different levels. So I think it's a, one possible way of going forward. I'm sure there are many others, but just just seems to fit the English bread-making story.